Hello there, my name's Vince from My Mate Vince, and in this video today we're looking at this JBL waterproof speaker. This one here is an Xtreme 3, currently in the shops like Argos for 250 UK pounds. I have seen one on Amazon for 229, I think it was. This one here was part of an Amazon return job lot. And as far as I can see, it looks like it's had no use. It looks like it was faulty from manufacture. To me, it looks brand new. Even the packaging in here, everything just looks perfect. There's even a little strap, believe it or not, if you wanted to wear it <laughs> over your shoulder like that, if you wanted to transport it to somewhere like a park. Now, I tried charging it up and it does charge up. When I plug it in, a little light comes on here and I charge it up fully until the light went out. So that part of it's working. But when I hit the power button here, there's nothing happening. You're supposed to just tap it and it's supposed to come alive. But whether I hold it or tap it, it makes no difference. It's not coming on whatsoever. Let's get it over to the blue mat and see if it is gonna be fixable or not. Hopefully it should be interesting. So let's force it open from here. And we've got a few screws around here, so let's undo them and see if this section here lifts down. Here we go. Right, so it was just that one there and that one there that you had to undo, not these ones here. Right, so that is the main body out. I have got one broken clip there, but that's no big deal. Right, power buttons are up here. So how do we get into this? See, I'm wondering if it's as simple as the, uh, the power button's failed. Either that or it could be a ribbon cable going from here down into it. So let's uh, undo these two here. So it looks like we've got two drivers here, two little tweeters, and these are just passive. Oh, look at that. Woo, woo, woo. I'm pushing up the middle. Those are uh, passive base radiator things. Right, okay, now, ribbon cables. So one goes up there, that looks like it's in place, just here. And it goes down into the board also at the top, and it also looks like it's in place. So it's not that. Basically, I need to, there's no, there's no screws holding this thing in here. It must be just, it must be st uh, stuck in with tape. So I need to lift this up. I can hear the tape breaking, there we go. Excellent. Right, okay, now, let's zoom in. Is it just gonna be a switch problem? So we're looking at this one here. It's clicking fine. Let's go under diagonals. I'm just gonna set my meter to continuity. So, yeah, there, there, now diagonal time. Now switch is working, so it's not a switch problem. Right, okay, now, I mean it is charging, so I don't think it's gonna be a battery problem. I think you can reset it by hitting, I think you hit these two or something, but it has to be on. Let's hold it down. Oh my word, did you hear that? Did you hear that? Listen, listen to that. Hold on. So I tried to recreate this over and over again, but it didn't matter what combination of buttons I pressed, it would not do it. So it's strange how it did it the first time, but not after that, which leads me to believe that, annoyingly, is this gonna be some sort of software issue? Hmm. 
Well, it gave me a bit of life, which is worrying. I hope it's not some weird software issue. Let me see where the battery is and if I can disconnect the battery and I can just connect it up again. So the battery is... Oh, it's going to be this massive one down here, isn't it? You see down here. Let's try to disconnect the battery. Here we go. Well, I should be able to put it out from here. Yes. Right, I'm just gonna double check there is power in the battery. It's a 7.2 volt battery, 5,000 milliamp hours, 36 watt hours, and it says uh, limited charge voltage 8.4, so it should be 7.2. Let's see what we have. Volts DC. I'm just gonna go on the black and the red. 8.2, so there we go, battery is completely full. Right, maybe by unplugging it like that, I've reset something. So let's plug this back in and see what it's doing. There we go, take it off for a minute. It's just weird how it made that noise when I hit these two. Well, I think I'm gonna take it all apart. So really I need more access on the inside of it. So I'm gonna undo the right hand side base radiator. It's just four screws holding it in. And at least that way then I'll have a lot more access to the circuit board and the ribbon cables. The ribbon cables all look to be fully inserted. Tell you what, let's measure for voltage. Because uh, I presume this is going to be bringing it down to ground. Let's see if we have any voltage at the switch. No, interesting. So we haven't got voltage there. So how can it turn it on if we haven't got voltage there? Right, that's really, really good news. So if we haven't got voltage on the power switch, maybe we haven't got any voltage coming up from the main board to the little power switch and volume board. So is it a problem with the main board or is it a problem with the power switch board? We need to work that out. So let's disconnect the battery and now we're testing purely the power switch and volume board to the end of the ribbon cable where it attaches onto the main board. So the ribbon cable is now disconnected from the main board. And if we have continuity, then that would suggest there's a problem with the main board. If we haven't got continuity, it would suggest there's a problem with the power switch board, in which case we can fault find further. Right, so the bottom of that one is coming up. That's coming up. The top is not. That's weird, that one's not coming up either. So it looks like some of the contacts are coming up, but a lot of them are not. I think we need to get this little power switch and volume board out. Annoyingly, it's fully taped into place to make it all nice and waterproof, so it does take a lot of force, but it is possible to remove it with a bit of prying. So let's get it onto the bench itself and see if we can work out what is the matter with this power board that it's not traveling down the ribbon cable. There we go. So what's going on? Right, let's put it on diode test and see if these lights light up. Nothing that way. Yes, so that works. So the lights work. Let's just check everything. Ah, oh, look at that, they all light up. Right, so that's everything around the edge there. Yeah, that, that. 
Then, so the lights are working. Well, everything looks perfect. There's no burnt components. The board looks immaculate. So let's get the microscope out and let's have a close look at the ribbon cable connector, just in case it's a fault within the actual connector itself. Confused here. I'm under the microscope and this is the connection. So we're coming down from the little power board here. And this is the connection for the ribbon cable that goes across to the main board. Now, you can see that there's little humps here. Yeah. So if there's humps there, there's only one way the ribbon cable can go in. So I was thinking, has it been put in the wrong way? It can only go in this way here. Because if we put it in this way, you can see that the humps are not going to actually connect to the plastic. So it has to go in this way. And you can actually see that there's loads of little dots on it. Because that's when we clamp it down, those humps will pierce, not pierce, but just rest on each of these. And you can see that there's 12 pins in the middle, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and they all line up. So there's six pins on each either side. So this first one will go to here. The second one will go to here. Third one to here, fourth one to here, all the way across to here. So this will be the 12th one here. I don't think we're getting full continuity through this ribbon cable because look, I'm pushing it fully home now. Yeah, that's right the way in there and clamping down. I can't go anymore. Now, watch this. If I go over to the other camera. If I get the uh, blue tech to help me there, let's go on the very first pin here. The very first pin. Not coming up. Yeah, look. That first pin is not coming up here. Yeah. Second pin. Sorry, second pin up here. Is not coming up. Third pin, but also hitting against the first pin a bit. Not coming up. It's only when we start going across right into the middle that we start getting it. So there's something wrong on this side of the ribbon cable as far as I can see. Stick this here. And that goes all the way along here to that side there. Right, now, we should have continuity between here and here. What on earth we haven't? Only in the middle. A ribbon cable failure. Well, that must have happened at the factory. Right, so I can understand that it might have gone at the end here because you would think that maybe the pins have gone through. But look, this one should be getting to here. And it's not. This one to here, no. Here, no. But now when it comes to the middle ones, they start working. There. That works. That works. That works. And then they stop again, I think. That. The last two, I oh know there's something there, last one, nothing on the last one. What on earth, where has that gone? How weird is that? We've got a kink here, unless it's, this has gone there, I don't think so. Ah, oh, could it have gone just here? Do you know, I don't think they have gone there. I think I'm gonna take off this here. Maybe, maybe this is hiding something. And no damage that side either. So it is going to be where it's bent. I don't think I've ever had a ribbon cable fail like that. So it shows you I didn't need to do any of this, but I had to to do the testing. But if you had an inkling that was going to be the ribbon cable, you could just popped it out and tested it on its own. Right, if I was to take a guess, I would say it's here because it's a very extreme bend there while this bend isn't quite so extreme. So I think it's gone here. So it looks like it was just a ribbon cable at fault and that's unusual because I've never seen a brand new ribbon cable fail before in the time that I've been doing this. Maybe it's really common, but I haven't come across it. Now at this moment in time, I'm editing this video. So I've actually bought some. 
I'm going to show you me attempting to fix the ribbon cable in this next bit, but obviously the best thing is just to replace it, but not exactly expensive items. I was hoping to buy a kit of all different sizes and also orientations because you're going to have forward and reverse ones. So some of them are going to have the pins on the same side on both of them, and some's going to have the pins underneath on one side and facing you on the other side. Like in this video, they're, they're reversed. You know, the pins are on one side on the right hand side, but underneath on the left hand side. So uh, yeah, unfortunately I can't find a kit so I had to buy individual ones but what I did is especially on Amazon I bought 30 pin ones because then you see I can cut them down to 12 pin like in this instance here or 15 pin or 18 pin or two lots of eight pin I'm hoping I'll be able to cut them quite neatly even if it's a bit jagged who cares as long as there's continuity between the left hand side and the right hand side the device itself isn't going to care so I've bought a mixture of forward ones and reverse ones and also I've bought 0.5 millimeter pitch and one millimeter pitch. I believe the difference there is one millimeter pitch will have a pin every one millimeter, so a wire every one millimeter, and 0.5 will have a pin every 0.5 millimeters. I'm hoping that's it. I'm hoping you don't then get 0.4 and 0.3 and 0.6 and 0.7. I'm hoping it's just kind of normally 0.5 and one. Obviously, there's going to be specialist equipment out there that would have different ones, but I'm hoping they're going to be the common ones. So I bought them on eBay and also Amazon as well. Uh, it came to around £30 for a variety of different ones, so hopefully this will keep me going well into the future. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to try to get this ribbon cable fixed up by just basically doing a bit of a bodge. So we need to cut it back and then I need to expose more pins. Now I could just use the fiberglass brush to get the pins back or a grinding pen. I'm just using a soldering iron to get the initial plastic away from the pins and then I'm going to use the fiberglass brush to scrape away. While we're doing that, I'll give a shout out to the My Mavens Massive. The members this month are kitdigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky. Having fun repairs, Chris Seal, Felipe at mrkeebs.com, DJVG, Pixie, Robert from Timsey's Auto Air, Daniel Watson, Anthony Dean, Baza2, Russ Melanson, Gaspar Heller, Ricard Berglund, Jacob Culpin, Matt Rawlins, Soul Reaver 555, Dorian from Hoover Lux Restorations, and Angry Owl Tech. Massive thank you to each and every one of you. So now that I've bodged this ribbon cable up, let's get it inserted and see if we now have continuity between the good side of the ribbon cable and the board. Right, it might end up with loads of bridges, shorts. I'm gonna put this in the other side to give it pressure against it. Right, so that's the blue bit in there, and that's it in there, nice and strong. Let's see how many shorts there are on it. So I'll check for shorts to begin with, and then I'll check for continuity. Right, okay, when I go across them, there's no shorts in between each of the pins, which is good. Now, let's see if they're coming up here. So it's gonna be every other one up here, isn't it? No way, it's actually getting there. Right, let's try this side here now. Unbelievable, against all the odds, it's actually there. Right now, I don't think I'm gonna put glue on it because I wouldn't mind looking into buying one of these ribbon cables because it's quite an expensive device and it'd be nice to have it done properly. But for the time being, what I'm gonna do is just get some captain tape and kind of like a tape it onto here, from here to here. So then if there is a little bit of shaking or movement, hopefully it won't, uh, it won't fall off. There we go. Right, let's get this back together and see if it's gonna work. 
So putting it back together should be straightforward enough. So next time you're gonna see this now, it's gonna be fully back together and we can give it a quick little test on the blue mat, but then we'll do a proper test elsewhere. Wow, well look at that. Apart from the fact it's probably not waterproof like it was originally, you wouldn't really know that anybody's been in there. Right now, look at that, lights up straight away. Fantastic, brilliant. Okay, well, I'm gonna mess around with it now, get it synced up to my phone, and I'm gonna to listen to a bit of music, and then I'll finish up the video. So I listened to this speaker here for about four hours last night and a variety of different music, and especially after reading such good reviews on it, I was left underwhelmed. And then I woke up this morning and I thought, Vince, I'm being unfair. I'm comparing it to the likes of this lovely little B&O portable speaker down here and also the iconic Bowers and Wilkins Zeppelin here. And it's unfair to do that because this is a home device and... In today's money is probably going to be about three times the price of that that was i think 500 ish quid back in 2008 so you're talking about 15 years ago it was still twice the price of that so you can't compare the markets this here would have also been more expensive and you can't compare again because the thing is you're not really going to be taking that around a pool and the beach and stuff because i've got a feeling water would probably get in there quite easily while this thing here looks very well waterproof not so much now that I've had it apart but it's still going to be a lot more rugged than either of these two so it's unfair for me to compare that against these two because the markets are different so given that I think that this does do its job very well you could take that on a building site barbecue pool wherever you want that's going to perform admirably so uh, yeah Overall, I'm very happy with it, and it was interesting to see that it was just a ribbon cable failure. Why was that? Was it manufacturing tolerances that were slightly out, or was it plugged in with too much gusto at the factory and it just bent from the very beginning? It must have passed quality control, but maybe then it just failed shortly after that. In transit, it might have just wobbled just that tiny little bit that stopped it from working. So that is it for this video. I am gonna play you out now with a song from here and then you can hear it while the credits are rolling. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you like these sort of videos and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Thank you so much, I will catch you all very soon. Appalachian sunrise Meets my skin Even with my eyes still closed I can feel it coming Golden I'll follow the golden 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 things Thank you.